In this second part of the tutorial on lip sync in animation, we're going to create a custom rig which will allow us to very quickly animate between the various mouth shapes that we've got. Now, as I said in the previous one, I've only got three shapes. You might have 15 shapes, but this technique will work regardless as long as you can fit them all on the screen across the top or across the bottom or wherever it's going to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my rig and I'm going to do that with text. So I'm going to take my text tool and I'm going to click at the top of my composition here and I'm going to type the first shape, which I'm going to go with ah. Now you can see at the moment that's a terrible color. So I'm going to double click that and I'm going to make that. Um, I'm going to make it black so we can see it very clearly in this particular composition. And then I'm going to click here and I'm going to do ooh. And I'm going to do E here. Okay, so those are my three sets of letters. I'm going to select them all and I'm going to hit P for position. And I'm just going to pull the E down so it's about the right place, which is about say there. In fact, I'm going to scale them all to start off with. They're all a bit big actually. I'm just going to make it a bit smaller. Let's make them all a bit smaller. That'll do. That's much better. And then hit P again for position and make sure that they're about that should do so we're talking about 90 so if i click in here and type 90 they'll all go over each other but we can separate them in a minute so they're all at 90 now i can actually click away and i can work out where i want them to go so i'm going to have e at the let's have a look let's look at the shape pre-comp so I've, I've got ah at the first one oh is the second one e is the third one so there's ah let's just move that across so we can put it Hold my shift key to move it across a little bit better. So I'm going to actually place that at 50. So I'm going to click in here and type 50 in the X position. And then for O or O, I'm going to do 150. And for E, I'm going to do 250. Okay, so their placements are deliberate so that they go across the screen. I'm actually going to just call that O as opposed to OO. So I'm going to click in there. There we go. So that'll do. So those are my three shapes now you would do all the rest across your screen as I say I've only got the three of them and I'm going to draw a little box around them just so that we can see them as uh, being a rig as opposed to something else in our scene so I'm going to create a shape so I'm going to take my rectangle tool and I'm going to have a stroke which I'm going to make as say blue I'm going to have no fill so I can turn my fill to nothing and I'm going to have say six pixels and I'm just going to draw around these so that we can clearly see that they're part of a rig. There we go. I'm actually make the pixels a bit bigger so it's a bit more obvious. There we go. So there's my rig at the top. Okay, so I can shut those all down. They're all in the appropriate place. But notice I have got the first one at 50, second one at 150, third one at 250. You go 354, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, all the way across the, the, the width of your composition putting all these different bits in to be able to sort of do this technique so now that those are done I can select them all holding the shift key select the bottom and the top right click on them and choose this option here which says guide layer and when you choose guide layer what you're saying is do not render so you're in my composition and I can see you but in actual fact I'm not going to be able to render you out at the end I'm just going to make you a guide layer so I can click guide layer and bear in mind these don't have to be at the top they could be at the bottom as well I get the new icon here saying that they are all a guide layer I can lock them all because I'm not going to use those again and I can shy them all so I'm going to click shy guy on those particular ones so I don't need to see these layers anymore and hit the shy guy and they're gone okay so now I've got something at 50 something 150 something at 250 and it'd be as I say if you did it more you could have three four five whatever across the screen the next thing I need to do is actually create what I'm going to be using as my controller. So again, I'm going to take my shape layer with nothing selected. I'm going to change this to red this time so it's really clear that this is the one I want to animate, which is going to be nice and bright. And I'm just going to click and draw around this first shape here. Okay, so that's that particular one. I'm just going to actually make it a little bit smaller. There we go. That's actually created. And that particular one... I'm now going to make a few changes to. Firstly, I'm going to move its anchor point to its middle. So I'm just going to click the pan behind tool, click on that layer, actually on the layer itself. I'm not working with the shape. So I'm clicking on the layer and take the pan behind tool to take its anchor point, take it to the middle, hold the control key. When you hold the control key, you get a little square that says it's in the middle. Great, that's done. And now I don't want to be able to fool around with the shape of this. So I'm going to actually select the layer and hit S for scale. 
and I'm going to add an expression to scale and I'm going to so I'm going to alt click scale and I'm just going to put an array so open square brackets I'm going to put 100 comma 100 close square brackets and that's basically saying you can't scale you've got to stay as you are all the way through so hit enter now I can't change it and if I take the selection tool and I go in there and I actually click the side of one of these things you'll see that I can't scale it so I can't accidentally select it and change its shape or its size it is locked at that particular size and I'm now going to hit P for position and actually have a look where it is so let's just move it so it's in where we want it to be X and Y so we want it to be about there so 69 as long as it doesn't go over 100 so when it's over it that's 92 that's great okay that's good so we want the height to be about 60 we're going to actually add an expression to this one as well to make sure that this can only go at the moment if I select on it so I can go up and down and all over the place but if I put it over roughly where I want it to be I want it to be roughly about say there and you see that that is 57 in the Y dimension so if I alt click on position here what I can actually say is if I click and drag up to 91 so you can be whatever you want comes up with this expression which says basically temp is whatever position is of the first one it has to be so it's then using this whatever the position is for X and Y but I want Y to stay at 57 so rather than saying temp at the end here select that second temp and type 57 enter on my keyboard not my main keyboard but on my number pad and now when I pull across I can't pull it up and down I can only go across okay so you can see you're going over the various bits and pieces that you want to go across okay so that's going across making sure that we're at the appropriate place now you can add a slider in here or you can actually do the time remap direct I'm going to add a slider in just to make things perhaps a little bit more obvious but this is one of those steps which, if, which you potentially could miss if you wanted to I'm going to select my shape layer 2 and I'm going to add an expression controller so if you go effect and you go down you'll find you've got expression controls and the one you're looking for is right at the bottom it's the slider control and it adds the slider control to this layer I'm actually going to lock the panel in place so it stays there if you right click on the slider you can actually edit its value so I'm going to edit its value and I've actually only got three and I've got zero one two three so if I just click zero two two three okay so I'm going zero to three so my slider is only going from zero to three okay just putting that across zero to three now that slider is what is actually going to drive this down here because if you remember I've got three frames that I need to get between so I'm going to drive this from my slider it's going to all click on the time remap and take the pickwick up and say you have to be controlled by the slider when I let go if I hit enter and I start to pull across you'll see that when it gets to well it's, it's kind of all disappeared instantly it's going one two three okay it's not really doing it quite the way we want to do it because obviously clearly by the time you got to the first few it's gone all the way through so we need to put some kind of divider in and actually the divider that we need to use if you click at the end put divide by 25 enter on your number pad you'll find that if I look up here when I take the slider at zero it stays at zero but as soon as I hit one pop it pops to the next mouth shape and then at two it goes to the last mouth shape and at three it disappears off in actual fact what I want to do is make this zero one two so I'm going to right click on the slider edit value and I should have gone not to three but to two okay so now when I pull across up to one at one it pops across at two I get to the last one of my three okay so it's controlled now by the slider the slider has got three different positions zero one and two and I know that whenever I'm over zero I've got one shape as soon as I get to one I get the second shape and as soon as I get to two I get the third shape so the slider is now what is controlling the shapes and I could theoretically just animate the slider to achieve what we want to achieve however what we really want to do is have this box being our controller that controls the slider so what we want is the position of this little layer here our little red square to actually control the slider so I'm just going to open up position on this as well so if I shut the layer and open it up again 
So I'm going to open up my effect and there's my slider control. There's my slider control and transform. I've got position as well. Okay, so I'm saying slider, you have to be controlled by the position of the layer. So if I alt click on the slider and I drag that down to the position of the layer and let go, I hit enter on my number pad. It's not going to work straight away. You see, it kind of disappears. You think, oh my goodness, what's gone on? Okay, it's not sort of doing what it's supposed to do. What we can do is we need, again, to add a divider. And bear in mind that, that this is sort of got two decimal places it's working through. So if you click just here, do divide by 100, enter, suddenly we're back to business. Now, I'm over A, and I go over O, oh, I go over E. As soon as I've moved beyond the zero range to the one range to the two range, I'm getting between the various different mouse shapes. Okay, and of course that would go on for however many mouth shapes you actually had. So, to actually do the animation now, what we're actually going to be animating is the position of this controller layer. So I'm going to enter and I'm going to call it controller. I'm just going to hit P for position, and I'm going to animate the position. So I'm going to click the stopwatch, and then I'm going to go 4 to 50 frames. You can, by the way, control click and go back to seconds at this stage if you want. Now, if I go to oh here, it's going to work because I've only got two. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to E. And then what you'll see is when I go between them, it's kind of going to go between the two of them. So again, we can't use standard keyframes. So I'm just going to delete that second keyframe. Right click on the first keyframe again and choose toggle hold keyframe. Now when I go to two seconds, which is a massive amount for lip sync, but just for example, and I were to go all the way through to E, if I go between them, nothing will happen. So I'm on O, I'm on A, and nothing will happen until I get to that next whole keyframe, and then I'm on the next one. If I went to four seconds, and I went to go O, you can see I get between the various ones very quickly. Okay, so that is the rig. It's a really simple rig. It's basically using simple animation techniques We've constrained its movement, so it's just going to be over the various bits and pieces. We can also change which one it's going to start on. As long as you're over keyframe, of course, you know you can change it and get the appropriate one wherever it is. So you can have as many as you like going along. What we're using is the position of the layer. That's why it's 50, 150, 250, 350, 450, etc. All the way across the, the width of your screen. And this is a 1920 by 1080, so we have up to 1,900, well, 1,850, so you can have 18 odd, I guess, going along the width of this. So this is the sort of way that you can actually work to create a controller to control your lip sync animation inside of After Effects and do it really quickly. You leave the time remapping on your pre-comps, but you actually, at the end of the day, you can use your controller and you can even shy off the previous layer and just have your controller and then you can actually work on making sure your lip sync is perfect. So you bring in your audio file, drop it on the timeline and actually go ahead and animate from there. I hope you found these tutorials useful and that these techniques will be things that you can actually use. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching.